Hi, I'm Phil from Driftworks and this is my E30 M3. Um, you should have hopefully seen recently a big walk around video of the car, um, sort of discussing a lot of stuff in detail. Uh, this is slightly different. We're about to head to Cadwell Park for its first track day in a while, possibly this year. In fact, yeah, I think it's this year. Uh, and I've done a few bits and pieces to it to sort of prepare it and uh, get it ready for the track day, but also kind of update a few things. There's a few things that have been that I've been wanting to tweak, wanting to perfect for some time now. And now that the gearbox controller is working really nicely, the Cybex and the gearbox control are talking to each other nicely, I've kind of been inspired into sort of finishing off a few things. So uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll walk you through a few of them. Say hi to Jay. <laughs> Jay, stand there looking awkward. Stand there for longer. Longer. <laughs> so, one of the things, StarTech lights. Jay and that short straw um, had to polish these. Yeah, it was Come up all right, didn't they? They did, yeah. Get, get a bit of lacquer off one of them. Yeah. Is it um, tinted, wasn't it? Uh, it was something, whatever. One was lacquered, one wasn't, and they were pretty old looking, so. Yeah, so. Um, they polished up all right. Yeah, they come out really nice. And uh, no, sort of. A lot of uh, more modern people don't sort of get StarTex, but uh, I really like them. They're possibly a little bit salmon-y for my taste. Maybe I'd even think about tinting them myself or making them red. I don't know whether that's a thing. I don't know whether you can put red um, tint spray over the top of these without them looking awful, but you know, there's one thing. That's good. Um, other thing I've done in preparation for the track day is Went to the lathe, machined down a bung for one side of the exhaust because it's a three and a half inch system underneath there and those are two three inch exits uh, and that's just quietened it down just enough I hope to have no issue going through Cadwell noise test if there even is one at the moment because well, it says, was it 95 drive by was it? It's that's quite, quite low isn't it? No, nah, it's quite... It's like same as Donington isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's reasonable. And this passed at Donington, but uh, Cadwell's a bit further to go and fail the noise test, so I figured I'd put that in. I actually really like it with it in as well. I think it, the noise is, get a little bit more of the induction and slightly less of the bellow of the exhaust. So I'll probably make this permanent in a better way, obviously without it looking ugly with a stupid bung in the end. And you can see here, different wheels on it. Uh, I decided to buy some wets. Some used 27, 65, 65 18s. 18s for the rear. Uh, I decided on that size because getting width on 17 inch wet is quite difficult. I wasn't able to find anything. And also these are the old wheels off um, my V10 M3, which I'm no longer using. So had speed wells, uh, satin black them up for me. And yeah, these are just a used set of pair of Michelins at the back, uh, GT Rain or whatever they are and they were very cheap 125 quid or something like that barely used at all the front was slightly more complicated uh, i had to buy some wheels some matching 17s for the front and these are brand new hankook i want to say two three five six twenties r17 yeah yay yeah whatever those numbers mean in uh... yeah and they are a super square tire um so having to be quite careful with the arch clearance here, so it's got a different spacer on it. It's a lower, it's higher offset wheel, so I've had to put a bigger spacer on the front. So we're just testing this. These are coming off now. Um, they're cool, but they're nowhere near as cool as the MCO Racing that are my dry tyres with the um, Nankang AR ones. And what else have I done? Oh yeah, anti roll bar. Um, did that. Yeah, did an upgrade to the front anti roll bar which I've always thought was too small for the weight of the front end of this car. And uh, basically did quite a crude addition to what was already there, uh, basically sleeving it on the outside to increase diameter and did a bit of measuring and checking and making sure it was working as well. I've got a video of that actually, so I'll just put that here. To measure the stiffness of the existing anti-roll bar, I disconnected one side of the anti-roll bar drop links and I basically hung a 40 kilo weight off that drop link, then zeroed an angle gauge on one side of the anti-roll bar blade and then measured the difference in degrees of the other side's anti-roll bar blade. And I did that with 40 kilos and then did it again with 70 kilos. So I'd kind of got a little bit more accuracy, possibly. So it turns out I completely forgot to film the actual sleeving of the anti-roll bar 
um, the piece of metal that we used to sleeve over it. But basically what I did was I bought some T45 tubing with an inner diameter of one inch because the existing anti-roll bar on the car had an outer diameter of one inch. And what we did was essentially cut it down the middle, cut it into two pieces, uh, sandwiched it either side of the existing anti-roll bar, uh, drilled a few holes and seam welded and puddle welded it through. Now I know that um, welding a piece of spring steel basically is questionable whether it's um, going to work out long term. But I didn't want to go too crazy with um, starting from scratch recreating a very complicated anti-roll bar without seeing whether the increase in spring rate actually works to start off with. So this was a pretty simple way of getting it done sort of in a morning's work with the help of Craig and Jay of course. So that's all sorted. New 1.250 inch anti-roll bar fitted. And I've just done the same um, measurements, same calculations using 40 kilogram of weight and then 70 kilogram of weight. Um, and basically measuring the degrees against this arm uh, with zero weight on it, just preload to get a base reading and then measuring it with the 40 kilo weight hanging off the end here and with a 70 kilo weight hanging off the end. And by my calculations, I've basically made the bar 40% stiffer, 42% to be precise, but 40% stiffer is right in the ballpark of what I was after, so super happy with that. And if it does end up being too stiff for certain situations like rain, which we get a lot of here, I've still got the adjustable end bars here, which I can turn around and soften it up. So hopefully that is now Done, happy days. So that's possibly about it really, other than I've done lots of stuff. Oh, I've done an alignment. So got the E30 on the alignment ramp. We're using the Hunter alignment machine. And for those that you've been watching for a while, you'll know that the Hunter alignment machine broke down. I think it's probably more than six months ago now. Um, and I almost gave up on it, uh, but then somebody, a very kind person, contacted me through Instagram saying that they'd seen a seller on eBay, but eBay America that was breaking some Hunter parts. They didn't have the part I needed, which is the board for inside the PC. Um, but I contacted them and um, yeah, they found one. Uh, got that over to us and actually what we managed to do was use that to program a new chip on our broken board as well. So we now have two boards. We have one that's in the machine and one that's spare in case it ever breaks down again. Massive relief because I actually really like the system and didn't want to replace it for many reasons, mostly because it was, you know, potentially nearly 10,000 quid or more to um, replace it. So yeah, let's just see whether it works. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So the plan with the E30 is just to check over alignment because I know it will be, that, be out. Uh, we did some work to the front subframe, moving the inboard mount on the front lower arm. So I know that what we did with just simple toe gauges and camber plates will have affected, we couldn't get the caster right basically, it was done by eye. So I'm expecting that to be out. Um, I also need to remember to adjust the drop links on the new and improved front anti-roll bar because their stab length will have possibly changed, probably changed, and we don't want that preloading one side. So I'm gonna do that before I start the alignment. Um, but yeah, I guess I'd just better crack on, really. Here's the before measurements. Um, that's for the rear. It hasn't really moved that much considering it's on the eccentric bolt adjusters that I made, that I fitted into it. Um, toe is out, that's the main one. So it looks like the left side toe is towing out slightly when it should be towing in roughly about this amount. Um, zero, so eight minutes. So I'm gonna correct the rear first and then move on to the front. The front will be wildly out, I imagine. So yeah, camber's out by about 20 minutes. Uh, caster's out by a degree and a bit and tow. Yeah, whacked. So that's going to need some proper adjustment, but first we've got to do the rear axle. Okay, so I've just had to lengthen this ever so slightly. The adjustable anti-roll bar drop link there. Uh, focus, focus. Yeah, you can see a bit of thread at the top here. Just got to wind that nut down, lock it off. 
do this bolt up and that's all sorted. Your back's done, that's uh, just that eccentric bolt on that side. I do really wish that I'd uh, done rod ends and nose joint the whole lot like a proper race car, but uh, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. Uh, happy with that, it's one minute out, which is nothing, uh, but yeah, total, total tow, 15 minutes, and um, yeah, camber's around about that two, 220, so two degrees, 20 minutes is slightly less than two and a half degrees camber. So first I'm gonna have a look at the caster. This is the one that's out, that's front right. At six and a half degrees, that six minutes, six degrees, 30 minutes. Uh, that's a little bit too much, but um, yeah, I'll probably not, not mess with it and probably just match this side if I can. And to do that, basically undone these locking nuts here, which is a reverse nut on this side and on the rod, rod end here, that's a normal thread and it's a turnbuckle system. So I should just be able to Give it a twist, not that way. Give it a twist this way. And then put the camera down so I can actually do it with the spanner. So that's adjusted the length quite a bit there. And now we have matching caster and it's actually brought the camber perfectly in line here as well. And the toe is, yeah, the toe's actually not too far out as a total. It just needs moving left and right to make the steering wheel central, basically. So yeah, before I uh, lock off the nuts and everything on the um, caster adjustment on the tension rod, I'm just gonna set the toe. What a mega faff that was. Yeah, due to, again, my design, not, nobody else to blame. Um, but yeah, we've got a Titan manual steering rack here. It's quite difficult to get to, quite awkward adjusters. No turnbuckle on the outboard end. Um, and then obviously we've made access completely impossible by making this under tray and bolting it up before I did the uh, alignment. So yeah, that was a bit of a fight, but yeah, we have perfect alignment, all locked off and ready to go. Done. The Hunter alignment machine is now fixed, working perfectly and tested on my most challenging car to align. I guess that's what I'd call it, because yeah. It's the line on the steering wheel straight. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah it is. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, all good, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's actually really good, um, so that's, that's perfect. Fancy billet oil pan for the DCT. It's already got an oversized one on it, which has been a bit of a problem. Um, as you can see, a bit of a contact area because it sits quite low, even though we've made this sort of titanium diversion plate, skid pan. <laughs> um, skid plate that has helped it, it's still sitting a bit too low. So this is uh, Seams Legit Garage, their small oil pan. So it shouldn't sit quite so, hang quite so low basically, and it should be nice and solid. We have also, rather than have this as the primary contact point, which is the oil drain, which is always a problem, even on the standard ones, um, just been and used the powers of Mr. Craig Taylor and found this, which is a flush one that basically will be able to, with a bit of thread lock, basically wind that so it's completely flush inside the pan. So it shouldn't catch. You all right there, mate? Sparks came out of that. Sparks. Yeah. It is titanium. titanium. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I did it, not because it's lightweight, just because I wanted the cool spark. It's, it's not that light. <laughs> Didn't we weigh in? It was like eight kilos or something. Yeah, I think in six ki no, six kilos before we started cutting, something like that. But yeah, that's it's what true. happens if you get a mad thick piece of titanium. It's still got to have some weight. Hey, do you remember Righty Tighty, Lefty Lucy, yeah? Yeah. Are you sure? Problem. Before. Well, you made it, didn't you? Yeah, I did. It was, that was, a, it was a challenge to cut that as well, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was one of those days. <laughs> yeah, 
very nicely made piece of kit. Excuse my grubby fingerprints on it. We were pretty close to having a problem here. Check this out. So we'd seen the damage on it and I had to just brutally hammer this in to get, uh, to get the Allen key into it. But if you look how thin that is now, it's actually ground down to almost as thin as the copper washer in place. Oh, it's put so, a nice taper on it, hasn't it, to match the floor? Yeah, I'm guessing that where Gareth does his testing, there must be, he must be doing it on lanes. And maybe there's a hump in the middle of the tracks or something, because yeah. Well, it took it. Yeah, it did take it, and I, I think the titanium skid plate did its job, obviously. Well, it hasn't dug in, let it rip yeah. the sump off. So it would have been, been impressive to follow it with a camera. See them, <laughs> see them sparks. Yeah. <laughs> great minds think alike, with great instructions. So yeah, being clever with the um, drain plug, no need, it comes with one. A much nicer one, which is a yeah, Allen key hex. Also comes with the mountain hardware, which is stainless, and the huge O-ring that you need as well. So, round of applause. Other than that, I just basically I cleaned it up before that last video that I did, just to show you that I do look after it occasionally, and it does still scrub up quite well when I do. Um, give it a quick wash. So yeah, uh, I think that's probably not far away from just going on the trailer and. Yeah, uh, heading to Cadwell. I guess we'll see you there. <laughs> Is that what you do on YouTube? I guess we'll see you there. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> see you trackside. <laughs>